Word. Here we go. We are officially official here. All right. So we're going to talk today about my favorite tools for fat loss and for muscle gain. All of these tools will work uh, for any of your um, body composition goals, whatever they might be. So um, I hope that I can give you some uh, some great ideas here, some things to think about, some tips, some pointers. Please, as we go, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments uh, down below this video. If you're watching, um, whether it's live or replay, I don't even care. Please give this video a like. Give me a comment down in the comments, um, even if it's just to say, hey, uh, because the more we interact with the things in the group, the more our things in the group get up on other people's feeds. So please, it would help me out so, so much if you did that. Um, okay, so let's see. Oh, you're live. You're at Iron House right now, Amanda. Is anyone else there? Hi, friends. Um, Y'all that don't know, Iron House is my gym where I train. And so that's pretty rad that Amanda's there <laughs> live from the gym. Um, so, all right, let's get rolling here. So, uh, like I said, we're here today to talk about uh, my favorite tools um, and things that I use to help me meet my goals no matter what they are. So the title says um, specifically tools for fat loss, because let's be honest, ladies, that's what gets attention. Um, I put fat loss in the title of something and all of a sudden I get a million people saying, yes, I'm gonna come to this training. Um, but the reality is that these tools will work for fat loss, they will work for muscle gain, they will even work for maintaining, not doing anything, you know, not gaining or losing. Um, so it is really important to remember, however, my disclaimer, because the title does say fat loss, is that nobody should ever be living their life permanently in a calorie deficit. We should not be restricting food all of the time. Our calorie intake should cycle up and cycle down to keep our metabolism healthy, to keep our body healthy so that it can repair um, and keep our hormones balanced and everything else from calorie restriction before we cut calories again. So if you are in a calorie deficit, you do need to have periods of time where you eat more. And then once you are eating more and your body is doing great, then you can go head back into a calorie deficit and restrict again. And this should always cycle. Um, I do have a live that I did a while back on uh, what's called reverse dieting, which is this idea of increasing calories to repair before a deficit. Um, I am happy to tag anybody in that if you would like it. So let me know. Uh, okay, so these are the tools that I have found to be most helpful on my journey, um, whether that journey is fat loss or muscle gain. <laughs> Number one, first and foremost, I want to talk about this one because I feel like it is an absolute game changer and not enough people use it. It is da, 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 woo, my digital scale. Um, you do not need to get some fancy, expensive digital scale. Um, this little guy here is from Amazon. It cost me, I want to say, about maybe $12. Um, 10 to 15 bucks is all you need. You do not need anything with all the crazy excess features on it. Those are absolutely unnecessary and just a grab for your money. Don't bother with it. All you need your scale to do is obviously weigh your food, <laughs> um, but not only weighing your food, but you want it to weigh it in different um, units of measurement, like grams, ounces, pounds, and whatnot. Um, you also want it to be able to clear out when you, like, for example, if you put a bowl on it, you want to be able to zero the scale back out again so that you can weigh whatever you're about to put into the bowl. And this also applies when you have multiple ingredients, like say you're making a burrito bowl and you want to start with rice. You put your bowl on the scale, then you have to zero it out. Then you put your rice in, zero it out, put your meat in, you know, whatever, and zero it out each time so you can weigh each individual um, ingredient. So why is this my number one recommended tool? Like I said in the beginning, I think this is a total game changer and not enough people are using it. Knowing your food portions is absolutely critical. Many people measure their portions with uh, measuring cups and things like that, which is fine, but it is not nearly as accurate as weighing. And if you look at the back of a package, you're going to see that it's going to say like a quarter cup, and then it's going to say something like 28 grams. It seems like a lot of things a serving is 28 grams. I don't know why that is, but it is. Um, and so you'll see both. 
measuring in grams or on the scale, weighing it is far more accurate, especially you're going to thank me when you weigh out your cheese. <laughs> if, if you know, you know, when you measure cheese in a measuring cup, you don't get nearly as much as when you weigh it. <laughs> You've been shorting yourself cheese all along if you're measuring it. Um, so weighing is far more accurate. Um, other people besides measuring, they're just going to eyeball their servings. They're going to be like, eh, I think that's about a quarter cup. And y'all, that is just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> um, it, eyeballing your portions very seldom actually works out. And we usually end up overeating at least by a little bit. Unfortunately, that little bit of overeating over the course of each of your meals, by the end of the day, you have completely pulled yourself out of your calorie deficit. And so now at best, you're not gaining or losing any weight. You're staying the same. And at worst, you're potentially gaining weight. And then you don't understand why, because you're watching what you eat and whatever. And people say it all the time, I eat clean. I eat well. Well, do you know how much you eat? Nope. They sure don't. Well, there it is. It is absolutely possible to overeat healthy food. So a $15 digital scale is absolutely worth its weight in gold. Here it is again, plain, simple, nothing to it. I even wiped it off with a paper towel for y'all before I came on live. <laughs> That's how much I love you. Um, so um, if you do, you have a scale. Um, if you do, then tell me about it. Tell me if you use it. Tell me if you like it. Uh, maybe you can even give us some links down in the comments to which scale you have if you recommend it. Um, if you don't have a scale and you would like one, I've got something for you. Come back on Friday and find the free Ship Friday engagement post. Engage on it. You can win a gift card to Amazon and you can buy yourself one. So come back on Friday. Um, okay, my next favorite tool is a step tracker. You can get something as expensive as like an Apple watch, or you can go middle of the road with a Fitbit. That's what I have is a Fitbit charge five is mine. Um, or like a Garmin is another middle of the road one. And you can even keep it super duper cheap with an off-brand one off of Amazon. The important part is that it tracks your steps. Um, as you go up in price, the tracker is going to do a lot more things like tracking your sleep, which is very important to your health goals. Um, it's very underrated piece of your health journey. Um, it'll track your resting heart rate, even your heart rate variability and a lot more things. Um, so decide which features you want, find which, uh, trackers have those features and go from there as far as your price points. Like I said, I wear a Fitbit charge five. Um, it's the newest Fitbit charge that came out like a year ish ago. Um, I absolutely love it. It's the first Fitbit that has like a colored screen. Oh, I guess, of course, like I want it to show a colored screen and it's not going to. Um, it's like on the white screen, but it does have a colored screen. It's touch screen. It's pretty rad. Um, so why is the step tracker important? Simply put, y'all, Americans sit around too much. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We sit our butts down and we are far too sedentary. And really, there's nothing like a step tracker to quantify just how lazy we are. So um, sometimes when you see just how little you're moving your body, that's a real wake up call to get you to start moving your body. So you can set yourself step goals. You can join challenges um, through like on Fitbit has challenges through the app. Actually, here in our group, we have Fitbit step challenges where we play step bingo. Um, if you are not yet in our bingo game, please leave a comment below and I'll tell you how to get in. Um, you can even do challenges like with coworkers or, or you know, your family or whatever. Um, and it'll just naturally increase your overall activity level because I know not everyone, but many people are quite competitive and there's nothing like a challenge to get you moving. Um, when you increase your overall activity, you're increasing your overall calorie burn. The majority of our calories are burned each day come just from existing, from digesting food, walking around the house or the office or the store, um, doing housework, playing with your kids, playing with your pets, things like that. And a step tracker can be a great way to hold yourself accountable to make sure that you're moving around. Very few of our burned calories actually come from our workouts. So we cannot use the excuse of, I don't have time to work out, so I can't lose weight. That's a lie, y'all. That don't do that. You absolutely can. The very, very large 90% plus of our calories burned throughout the day is just from living life. 
from walking around, from doing things. So get your butt up, get moving, get yourself a tracker to make sure that you're moving. <clears throat> um, if you are watching us live or on the replay, please give this video a like and um, comment down below. Say, hey. Uh, number three, my next tool is pretty straight up. It's just simply an app to track your nutrition. You are weighing your portions with your digital food scale. And so now you need an app to keep track of it all. Um, I use my fitness pal. I do have the premium version of my fitness pal, but there are lots of others out there. There's my macros, there's lose it. Some of them are free. Some of them have monthly fees or yearly fees. Um, you can check out um, what features each of them has and decide which one is best for you. Uh, whether you choose, I'm sorry, whatever you choose, use it be honest with yourself about it and track every single thing that touches your lips. Even the random piece of candy as you're walking by someone's desk in the office, even the little nibbles that you eat off of your kids' plates because they didn't clear their plate, even the taste tests that when you're cooking, all of those things are calories and all of those things will add up and can very easily pull you out of a calorie deficit over time. The majority of people who insist that they are eating properly but not losing weight, honestly, they're just not being honest with themselves and they're tracking and they're either just not logging things because if we don't log it, it didn't happen, right? Whew, these are not the droids you're looking for. So if you don't, if you even if you don't log it, you still ate it. And that could absolutely be why you're not reaching your goals. Um, and the other part is that people are not properly calculating their portion sizes, which brings us back to number one, your digital food scale. So I'm not going to get too, too far into the apps for tracking because I'm going to cover this in next week's live. So make sure you come back next week and I'm going to talk about meal tracking 101. So those are my top three, but I do have a few honorable mentions for you. And I've got a couple that I think you should avoid. Um, so honorable mentions, some of my, a uh, few more of my favorite things is my air fryer. Y'all, my air fryer is life. Uh, number two, meal prep containers, because the meal prep containers help you once you have measured out all of your portions, you get them in your meal prep containers and you are ready to go. Oftentimes meal prep containers are an appropriate size for a portion versus the really big plates that sometimes we eat on. And then when we put a normal size portion in these, on these really big plates, then it feels like we're not eating enough food. And psychologically, we're screwing ourselves up. We're like, oh my God, I need to eat more. My plate's not full. No, you just have a big ass plate. So if you can just use meal prep containers or a smaller plate, um, that is psychologically going to help you eat less food. And then my last um, favorite honorable mention is a stainless water bottle. I have my gigantic Stanley cup. Thank you, Kelly, uh, with me right now. But I also have some other stainless shakers. Stainless because number one, plastic is evil. Stainless number two, it keeps it cold and I like my water cold. Uh, okay. Now, as promised, a couple of tools that I think are super overrated and you should not waste your money on. Number one, don't bother buying those expensive ass scales that weigh you and then try to pretend that they're telling you your body fat and all that stuff. It's a crock of shit, y'all. It's lies. Those things don't actually work. Um, if you want to know your body fat percentage, you can get a pair of calipers. Um, they literally will cost you about $6 on Amazon, or you can go to a place. Many gyms these days have um, like in-body scanners. We have those at our gym here in uh, Nashville. But um, those scales that you have in your bathroom are not telling you the truth. They are lying to you. It's very highly dependent on how hydrated you are, uh, whether or not you took a poop, um, all kinds of other stuff. It tells you a lot of other things besides your body fat percentage. Don't waste your money on that. If you need to weigh yourself, which the scale is a lying bitch. I did a live on that too. And I'm happy to tag you in it. If you want, tell me in the comments. Um, but if you must weigh yourself, just get a regular plain old scale. Don't waste your money on something expensive. I would rather you took that leftover money and buy a, can you guess? Buy a freaking digital food scale. Okay. Um, so the second one is actually kind of a funny one because it ties into something I mentioned earlier that I do recommend. But when you are looking at the data from your fitness trackers, do not look at, ignore, pretend it doesn't exist, the part of the tracker that tells you how many calories you burned. 
Also, much like the scales that tell you your body fat percent, it's a crock of shit. It's not true. You do not actually burn that number of calories. There is no way in the world some little thing you're wearing on your wrist is going to tell you how many calories you have burned in a day. It just doesn't. There, it, In order to do that, it would cause, uh, or it would be a very highly expensive medical grade test that would need to do that for you. Here's the problem. I know many people that will use the data on, say, their Fitbit on how many calories that were burned, and they plan their meals around that number. So say, for example, your, your tracker, your Fitbit, your Apple Watch, whatever, is telling you that you burn 2,400 calories. And so then people start designing their nutrition around it. And they're like, oh, well, if I burn 2,400 calories, I could eat like 2,000 or 2,200 calories and still be in a calorie deficit except that that 2,400 calories is a crock of shit. It's not true. And so you are eating based on inaccurate data. And so then people wonder, why aren't I losing weight? Well, because you're eating based off of inaccurate information. So do not just ignore that part of your tracker that says how many calories you burned. You did not actually burn that many calories. It might be more, it might be less. Who the hell knows? Your watch doesn't know either. And just <laughs> focus your calories on actual calculations where your, um, your BMR and, and there's other calculations you can do. You can find calculators online that can calculate how many calories you should be eating. Do not base anything off of your tracker information that says how many calories you burned in a day. Lies. Um, so there you have it. My three favorite tools, three honorable mentions, two things that are a crock of shit and you should avoid it. <laughs> So share your favorite things in the comments. Ask me any questions. Let's get some discussion going, y'all. And make sure you come back next week and join me where I'm going to talk about meal tracking 101. We're going to get a little bit more in depth with some apps and um, nutrition labels, all kinds of stuff like that. So come back next week and tell your friends. Make sure that you are drinking your water, you're eating your protein, and go be adventurous and do something new this week. I will talk to y'all later.